In the method section or chapter, the first thing you talk about is your research design. The second thing that you talk about is your participants. And that's what we want to talk about in this lecture. So, participants. And in talking about participants, we will talk about population and sample, sampling techniques, sampling procedures. So, first we need to understand what is population. Population is a general target group within which you want to examine your problem. Let us say women empowerment and divorce in Nairobi. So potentially all the women in Nairobi become your population. Now sometimes it is possible to have a sampling frame. What is a sampling frame? Sampling frame is a list of all the participants, all the individuals in that population. Of course, you can't have a list of all the women in Nairobi. So, in this case, you don't have a sampling frame. On the other hand, if you take my example of the effectiveness of the use of digital sources for research among university students, and you talk about the students as the population, then you are likely to have a sampling frame. If you say the students in Tangaza University College are your population, then it is not difficult to have a sampling frame. It will be simply the list of 1,200 students who are in the campus here in Tangaza sampling frame. Now, what is sampling? You cannot ask a question or administer a questionnaire to all the members in a population, particularly when your population is very large, as the case of women in Nairobi. And therefore, you're going to sample. You're going to select a few people in such a way that by examining this problem among these few people, you will have some light on the problem in the general population. So these three terms are important to begin with. Population, sampling frame, and sample. Now, if you have this large population, and you are going to go for a few participants among whom you are going to gather data using whatever techniques that we are going to talk about, then you need to sample. And how do you sample? There are three things here. One is, what is going to be your sample size. In qualitative research, we don't need to bother too much about sample size. There are formulas to determine sample size. We will talk about that in our research, uh, quantitative research lectures. Because in quantitative research, this rigorous way of determining the sample size is important. In qualitative methods, Often, you would not bother too much about the sample size provided you have a sufficient number of participants to argue a case. So we skip that sample size issue for now. But there are sampling procedures or sampling techniques. And then finally, you we can talk about how you go about this recruitment of the sample. Now, largely speaking, there are two large groups of sampling techniques. The first technique is probability sampling and the second is non-probability sampling. Now these are big terms. What is probability sampling? Probability sampling is a technique of sampling whereby all the participants in the population have an equal opportunity to enter into your sampling frame or your sample size. That means your research is going to be rigorous, your finding is more reliable and valid. Because everybody had equal opportunity. It could have been anybody in the population who could have entered into your sample. And that, those techniques are called probability sampling. Often, quantitative methods of research uh, tend to use probability sampling. We will come back to that. What is non-probability sampling? Non-probability sampling consists of techniques whereby not all the participants or not all the cases, not all the elements in a population have equal opportunity to enter into your sample frame. Now, for example, you administer 
uh, your questionnaires to your friends because they are accessible. Now that would be a non-probability sampling because you administered uh, questionnaires to your friends because it was easy to collect among them. They are justifiable. Not always we need to be very, very rigorous about sampling uh, uh, technique of using probability sampling. Uh, in qualitative research, because we are exploring experiences and uh, perceptions of individuals, we could use non-probability sampling. But remember, if you use probability sampling, there is a high level of generalizability. What is generalizability? The claim that what is true of the sample is true of the population. That is generalizability. And if you have carried out a probability sampling technique, then you are more likely to have better generalizability. Otherwise, you are just talking about this sample, not the whole population. Let us very quickly mention a few techniques of non-probability sampling that are relevant for qualitative research. We can talk about purposive sampling. Purposive sampling are techniques uh, that are non-probability sampling because you select someone because they are a special case, because they, uh, you have, they will meet your objective to feed data into your research question. Let us say uh, women empowerment and divorce. Let us say there is this woman that you think is highly empowered and she is divorced. Now, in terms of case study, you might want to ch uh, choose her as your sample. That is a purposive sampling. Now, if you increase that number of that characteristic of people, then you could have a large number, but you have used purposive sampling. Sometimes you could use theoretical sampling. Now, what is theoretical sampling? Because of your theoretical framework, it is related to purposive sampling because you are choosing this particular group of people because they fit into your theoretical framework. Your research question that flows from your theoretical framework. Most commonly used techniques in qualitative research are convenience sampling and snowball sampling. Convenience sampling are, uh, is a technique of collecting data from people who are easily available for research, easily accessible to you. They are living nearby you. They are friends. They are your classmates. And it's okay, provided your research question justifies that type of sampling. And in qualitative methods, often convenience sampling is the most used technique. Snowball sampling, finally, is a technique whereby you begin with one participant and you ask that participant if somebody they know someone in a similar situation. Let us say uh, you want to examine the psychological impact of rape. Now we don't have a sampling frame for people who have been uh, victims of uh, rape or who have suffered rape. You don't have a sampling frame, you don't have a list, so where do you begin? Maybe you will begin with, by examining one person that you might have known who has uh, suffered rape. And you might ask that person if they know someone in a similar situation. As we say, uh, birds of the same feather flock together. Often people with similar problems tend to know each other. And therefore, that, uh, using that sort of a background, we do snowball sampling that from one participant we go uh, building up uh, a sample size proposed by previous participants.